So, Father God, we honor you this morning. We sing praises to your name. Because you took us out of Egypt and brought us into all the land of our promises. So, if you said it, we believe it, and that settles it. So, Father God, we worship you. Let's sing this together in faith.
with us, who is talking with us, who is preparing the way for us. So God, if we walk in your steps, and where you move, we move. Where you tell us to go, Father God, we will go. Father God, we give you our yes this morning. The God that we will be vessels and we will do whatever you call us to do. So we honor you in this place. And we say, have your way in this place. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Give me the glad that this morning. Oh God, my God, I need you.
just take this moment and just thank you for his faithfulness in our life. Where we should have been and where we are right now. You feed the captives in your That you will renew our mind. That you will renew our heart. That God, that you will make a way where it seems like there will be no way. If you did it for Moses, you can do it for me. If you did it for Daniel, you can do it for me. If you did it for Abraham, So God, expectant hearts in this place. Recognize your greatness. So we surrender to you. And God, we give you the honor that you deserve. So may our worship make you smile this morning. May it be pleasing to you. That God, that this week, will be a shift in our week, in our mindsets, how we talk to people, how we walk. So God, be glorified in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. amen. We're so excited that you're here. We're about to go into a time of a meet and greet. So go find somebody, go shake their hand, give them a high five, give them a hug, and tell them that you're glad to see them.
morning. Grateful to have them with us. They're going to present colors for us this morning. Would you join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are so grateful for so many of you who are veterans here today. You can, you can take a seat right where you are. We want to say thank you so much uh, for your sacrifice. And so we'd like to take a moment and recognize you if, if we can do that. And so uh, let's, uh, as I call out a branch, I uh, would ask you, would you come forward? Would you come stand so everybody can see you? If you're able, if you're not able, uh, stand where you are or stay right where you are, that's fine. But we would love the chance not only to honor you by having you come forward, but then to pray over you. So uh, let's start. How about, uh, do we have any Coast Guard with us? Anybody who served in the Coast Guard with us? Anybody? The Navy. Where's the Navy? Come on. Yeah. Come on, sir. Alright, how about the Air Force? Come on, Air Force. Thank you so much. Thank you for loving 
guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Church, so grateful. Can, can we sing just a little? Can y'all sing a little bit more? All right, the, the color guard's going to go, and let's sing a little bit more. Let's sing a little bit more. Hey. All right. All right. Uh -huh. Some of them are sitting up front right here right now. 
and they are part of our tea center, they went over and served the Leesburg Police Department by working on bikes. Did y'all get all the bikes fixed? Most of them? All of them? Yes? Good. And so uh, they went over and served. So, man, how cool. What an opportunity to consistently be part of a church that is serving, right, and, and, and doing things. So we're, we're really excited. We're really glad that you're here. A couple quick announcements. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, check that out online. You're going to want to know. We have a winter wonderland going on Christmas Eve. You're going to want to check that out. Uh, summer camp is coming up. Can you believe we're talking about summer camp already? It's not even Christmas. But deposits are coming up after the verse of the year. I'm trying to tell you this, parents, but it's good. If you put 50 bucks now and 40 bucks now and 20 bucks, you'll get the whole thing if you start early uh, to do the deposit. Women's uh, retreat is coming up February 17th and 18th. There you go. Get registered for that. It's online now. Um, and also, um, we're starting a brand new series. So if it's your first time here, maybe you, you came on a good day. We're starting a brand new series, and I've been excited about this series for months. I am so excited to be at this moment and to start this with you because here's what we're going to talk about for the next month. Let me just go ahead and give you the agenda right off the, right off the get. We're going to, this series is called The Power of One. And something in our culture and our story is missing. When you interact with people every day, what's usually going on inside of them is they're missing a piece of the story. They're trying to, most of us are trying to figure out what is my purpose? When is the meaning of life? What, why am I here? What am I, what am I doing? Let me help you, I found something. And this is not so theological, but it's still kind of fun. Uh, let me help you with the meaning of life. You ready? When God created the world, he also created the dog, the monkey, and the cow. Uh, told through the eyes of the dog, the monkey, and the cow in their conversation with God during creation, life is explained very simply. On the first day, God created the dog. That's where it's not so theological. But anyway, and he said, sit all day by the door of your house and bark at anyone who comes or walks past. For this, I will give you a lifespan of 20 years. The dog said, that's a long time to just be barking. How about only 10 years and I'll give you back the other 10? So God agreed with the dog. On the second day, God created the monkey. And he said, entertain people, do tricks, make them laugh. For this, I will give you 20 year lifespan. The monkey said, monkey tricks for 20 years? That's a pretty long time to perform. How about I give you back 10 like the dog did? God agreed with the monkey. On the third day, God created the cow and said, you must go into the field with the farmer all day long, suffer under the sun, have calves, give milk to support the farmer's family. For this, I will give you a lifespan of 60 years. The cow said, 60 years, that's a tough life. Uh, for 60 years, how about 20 and I'll give you back 40? And God agreed. And on the fourth day, God created man and he said, eat, sleep, play, marry, enjoy your life. For this, I'll give you 20 years. <laughs> The man said, only 20 years to eat, sleep, drink, I, come on. Could you possibly give me 20, the 40 the cow gave back, the 10 the monkey gave back, and the 10 the dog gave back? That makes 80. How about that? So God agreed. So this is why for the first 20 years we eat, sleep, play, and enjoy ourselves. For the next 40 years, we slave under the sun to support our family. For the next 10 years, we do monkey tricks to entertain the grandchildren. And for the last 10 years, we sit on the front porch and bark at everybody who goes by. Amen, have a great week, we'll see you next week. Life has been, no, life, no, 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 no. But, but here's, here's what I wanna to say to you. Is, is, is what is what is life? What is what is because we come to church and we get inspired, right? We'll, we get inspired. One of, one of my goals, really, on, on a Sunday morning, I like to make you laugh. I always want to make you laugh, but I want to inspire you. Like like one of the things that stirs me is I just I want you to leave here ready to charge hell with a water pistol. Come on, somebody, right? To go bear hunting with a switch. Come on, y'all, right? Like like just and and, 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 and and so this, but but when we get out there. And when we get home and, and when we get to the workplace, how do you know, how, how many of you know how quickly vision sort of just seeps away? Come on, y'all. And we've got a vision that God has given us as a church. 
And it's so easy to come and be a part of something and there's a chili cook-off and the youth are going to work over here. And I don't know, there was like 4,000 prime timers in the cafeteria this morning. Right? We're gonna need to open up the stadium in the next couple weeks for prime timers. When you get a part of a church like that and God's doing something and God is moving, it's real easy for us to say, well, I'll let everybody else do it, right? I, I don't know what my part is. I don't know what my fit is. And what I need you to hear over the next couple weeks is the power of you. The power of you through Jesus, coupled with God's Holy Spirit, is powerful. Wherever you are, wherever God has put you, and there's an assignment he's given us. We, we, we read this quite often, but Isaiah 61 and 4, let me read it to you. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Can I get an amen? Come on now. That's the call. That's your call. That's my call. That's what Jesus describes of those who come after him. That that's what we'll do. And yet, if we're honest, many of us really struggle. Me? me? Like, what am I going to do? Right? What, 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 do you, what do you mean? Like, okay, yeah, that sounds all good. And, and I'll come and I'll join in and I'll be here. But I'm not sure that I play really a, a significant role. So that's why when I was mentioning the veterans, I mentioned a supply clerk. How many of you know it's kind of hard to be an amazing warrior if you ain't got toilet paper? <laughs> Come on now. That's the fly clerk's pretty darn important, right? I laugh at that because Mike Matheny Sr. was a supply clerk in the Marine Corps. And my dad was known for counting the squares of toilet paper, of how much you've used, right, in, in, in all this process. And as I was thinking about it, I was thinking about the significance of each one of you. The significance that God has for your life. It is so critical that we grasp the power of one. That we grasp the idea. And I say it often, and I'm going to keep saying it until it just gets grilled in your head. God did not make you step back and then go, good Lord, what are we going to do with this one? No. He's thought up a role within his great narrative. The story of God, his story, that's why it's called history. It's his story, the story, the narrative that, that he has been, since the beginning, since he created, there's this narrative that's going throughout time and we're part of that narrative and you have a role to play. As a matter of fact, when we get to heaven, they're gonna ask us two simple questions. The first one's gonna be, what did you do with Jesus? Right? Did you have a relationship with him? Did you know him personally? Not did you believe in him? Did you think, yeah, I kind of know him? Not did you just show up and listen to some crazy old man talk about it? Did you know him? And when the answer is yes, they're going to ask one more question. What did you do with your life? What did you do with your life? Because he didn't die on that cross just for have us to have goosebump bump worship moments. Come on, y'all. The, the, the goosebump worship moments are awesome, aren't they? I mean, that's good stuff, right? Feel God's presence. <laughs> but he died that we might live the life when it's hard. I said something to the 20-somethings the other night. And I'm not sure some of them liked it so much. Uh, but I said to them, I said, you know, something's wrong with our culture because... Everybody in our culture is looking for the easy bus. Come on, whenever I finally get a car, life will be easier. Whenever I finally get out of school, get out from under my parents, oh my God, right? Or whenever I finally get married, so grandma will stop asking me, when am I gonna get babies, right? And then we spend our whole life listening to me chasing the easy bus. Can I, can I tell you the easy bus never comes? That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But when you chase the easy bus, you have this 
emptiness. You have this thing inside of you that, that stays a hole inside of your heart that you never can fill because we're chasing the wrong thing. So can I say it to you this way? There's the Jesus bus and then there's the easy bus. And we're going to have to make a decision of what that is. And what's so hard is, there's what I call as the first villain in your notes, is, is, is what I would call the, the narrative void. The narrative void. Most people, and even some people sitting here today, there's a void in the narrative. I'm having a hard time understanding the narrative. Why, why am I here? Oh my Lord, why am I in Leesburg? Come on, I've watched it for years. People move to the villages. Where are my villagers? Got any villagers in the house today? Yeah, people move to the villages. Villages, it takes about eight months. I've been watching this for 22 years. It takes about eight months. Golf for life, dancing at the square, right? Bocce pickleball, I got this on Tuesdays and that. It takes about eight months until you go, what are we doing? Because... Because you have done things and created things and run businesses and there's something inside of you going, I need more. I need meaning. I need purpose. There's the narrative void. This, this, this story that's missing. And people, if you look around, people are tired. They're tired and wondering what life is all about. Does anybody else see that? This, what? What are we doing and why are we doing this? There's this amazing story that is a story about a community that is, is just like our, our culture. It's in Acts chapter 17, verse 16. I want to read through this story with you. And it's um, the Apostle Paul, and it goes like this. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the, the city was full of idols. So Paul's standing there and he looks around and there's all these statues and idols. Now, idols are just anything that you put up as more important than God. Right? So we have idols today. Right? Sometimes, sometimes our boat is an idol uh, because we make that a priority over coming to church. Right? We, sometimes our, our, our schedule is the idol because we don't have time to open up our Bible. Right? Or, or to spend some time with God in prayer. And then, like, so, so we have the same thing. He said, this was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace. I love that God added that into the script. This is exactly what I was talking about the chili cook-off last night. Right? It, it, it's, it's funny to me because the, the naked girl hanging out, handing out jello shots was just two booths down from the church. And I thought, praise God. Thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to be here and to be kind. Come on, y'all. And loving. And, 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 and that's, we, there, he was in the market. We need to be, you need to be talking about God at work. You need to be talking about God and what you do all day long in the marketplace, day by day, with those who happen to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. We should be debating, but how many of you know we should not be debating the way we're debating? Amen. Can I go ahead and say this? Please stop debating on social media. It is not doing any good. He went to the marketplace, stood face to face with somebody. Why? Because that says you matter. When you bark at somebody on social media, that says I don't have enough time for you, but I'll bark at your ideas. Got really quiet in here all of a sudden. Come on. Debate, but if some of them ask, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remark, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They say this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting at the Areopagus, Areopagus where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they, what's the word? Mean. We're looking for meaning. Isn't that our culture? Do you see a lot of idols in our culture? Not just American idol, right? But all the idols in our culture that we put up, that people are chasing and trying to create a new understanding of what the void is in their narrative, in their story. 
that, that we're trying to fill in the blanks in the process. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. I see you're very religious. I see that part of you. He actually kind of compliments them in the process. Can I can encourage you? When you go to have a conversation with somebody and you know that it's deep or you know it's a God conversation or you know you're going to bring something up, how about starting with a compliment? That's what he did. Right? How about starting with a compliment? How about, I see, I see that you're very zealous, that you're really religious in what you do. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found on the altar with this inscription. So here's one statue and it says, to an unknown God. Boy, isn't that the story of our culture? Amen. Trying to figure out what, what, what really matters. What is God? What's real? What's not real? What is marriage? What is sex or gender? What, I mean, to an unknown God. We are a culture full of idols, but we definitely have the one to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. He is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life. This is, this is life that I want to talk to you guys about today. Yeah, you know, you've got all these statues, but this one, I, I need you to understand there's a God and he's the God of life. He gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times. That's powerful. He marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. The, their appointed times in history and the boundary of their lands. You know what that means? That means every one of you and anyone else that we encounter is not just happenstance of your parents' intimacy. The creator of the universe knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Had purpose and meaning and said, a point in time right now. I wonder how many in here <laughs> have sometime in recent history been like, oh my God, why do we live here? And for some of us, we blame it on a divorce. We blame it on, well, I grew up here and I've never escaped Lake County. Right? Like, did you, did you catch that? He marked out the appointed times and the boundaries of their lands. What that means is God has you where he has you on purpose. You're here on purpose. You're here for a reason. And it's something more than golf. And it's something more than making a paycheck. And it's something more than getting a lift kit on your truck. Come on, somebody. There's, there's, the creator of the universe, what he, what he says is, at appointed times, at appointed boundaries of your land, this is where God wants you. He, God stepped back in his great narrative, thought of you, and went, oh, yeah, yeah, right, right there, right, absolutely, right there. Leesburg, 2022. That's, that's where I meet Alex Coelho. That's where I, I, I need Matthew Winterstorff. And he called your name and put you in this place specifically. And I need you to hear something this morning. You, God-designed individual, have been put in a God-designed place for a God-designed purpose. But somewhere along the line, do we lose the vision? Do, do we have a void in that narrative? God did this so they would seek him. And perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. Aren't you grateful for that? For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of you, your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Church, the world, science, is trying to fill a narrative void. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Science is trying to figure out. People will ask, how can you believe in God? Don't you believe in science? And, and, and my degree is in biochemistry. I love science. 
You know what I love about science? I love when science finally catches up and proves what God said all along. Amen. And it happens over and over. You, follower of Jesus, you have the answer. That's the power of one. Psalm 139 and 13. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You, please hear me this morning, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I know some of you looked in the mirror this morning and thought, oh, Lord Jesus. What happened? Some of us looked in the rearview mirror of our life over the last week and thought, what happened? And it is so critical for you to hear this morning that God is a redeemer of all things. He fixes, he overcomes, he breaks chains, he creates new. That's why it says the old is gone and the new has come. That's, that's the symbol of baptism that we had baptisms last week. You go down and you die to yourself and you come up a new creation. There's a struggle with that. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. That sentence is key. Can I ask you that, that, that probing question this morning? Do you know that full well? Do you know, deep in your soul, the creator of the universe loves me, created me purposefully, and even in every mistake that I make, he can fix and he can overcome. He can redeem, he didn't die on that cross for nothing, he died on that cross for all things. That all things may be made new. You were created with a purpose, but let me ask you the question, who's writing your story? Who's writing your story? Is, is fate the author of your story? Oh, what whatever happens, happens. Can I say this to you? If fate is the author of your story, you'll live a miserable life. I say that not to be ugly, I say that to warn you. I say that to call you out. That God has a story, and he has appointed times and roles for us to play. And you know what? You get to choose the role. That's, that's the power of one. You have a choice each and every day what character you're going to play. There's a great narrative going on. There's a great story going on. It's God's story. It's awesome. It is so cool and amazing. And he has a place for you and a part for you to play. But because he wants to have relationship with us and I have to choose relationship and you have to choose relationship, he gives us something called free will and free will allows us to choose, to choose what character we're gonna play. Well, let me, let me submit to you that in any great story, there are four characters. In any story, there are four characters. You get the opportunity to choose one of three. Here's the first one. You can choose the victim. The victim is the character who feels like there's no way out. Yeah, life's a mess and this has happened and all. And, and, and some of you got like, wait, 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 wait. I didn't choose that to happen to me. Someone did that to me and you're correct. But here's what I can say, you have a choice you may not have a choice whether you are victimized. What you do have a choice in is whether you stay a victim. You have a choice on whether you play that character out or not. And inevitably what happens is when you play the victor, victim character long enough, hurt sets in, anger sets in, frustration sets in, and you know what? Sometimes you'll end up then playing the second character in any story that you can choose to play, and that is the villain. The villain is the character who is responsible for ruining the story, right? There are villains everywhere, but can I say this to you? Villains are just ex-victims. 
need to let that, let that sink in for a moment. Because some of you got some villains in your story right now. And, and as godly as you are, the, your only response right now, the only thing you can muster up as a response is you'd like to punch them in the face. But villains are ex-victims because hurt people hurt people, right? Many people, listen to me, this is so critical. Many people choose the victim and the villain role as a coping mechanism. Many of us choose the victim and the villain role as a coping mechanism. But I need you to hear something this morning. You have a choice. You have a choice. The third character that you can choose is, of course, the hero. Right? The character who saves the day. Now listen to me. This is so critical for you to hear. Heroes are simply those who accept the challenges that happen to them and choose to be transformed and decide to help others. That's all a hero is. A hero is not, we, we think hero, we're like da 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 da, got the cape and we drove in in the Porsche. Right? No. A hero has challenges too. Remember what I said earlier? There's no easy bus. There, there's no easy bus coming. Life is hard. Life is frustrating. How many of you know, just about the time things calm down, something coming. Can I encourage you this morning? Here, let me encourage you. You ready? If you're not in a storm, or coming out of a storm, one's coming. Are you encouraged? Hey, listen, the easy bus is not coming. That, that is the story of our life. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Right? And so, be playing the hero comes when you have the fourth character placed correctly in your life. The fourth character is the guide. The guide is the character who helps the hero. Here's my question for you. Who's your guide? Who's your guide? Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe your guide is Tupac. Some of my older folks are like, excuse me? Pastor Dog explain it next week in ABM. No, I'm just kidding. Some, some of us, our guide is our social media feed. We actually are responding to life based on what we see on social media. For, for some of us, our guide is our close friends that are right around us, which is why you'll hear, often hear me say, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Your, your guide is who is speaking into your soul, speaking into your minds, helping with your thought processes, helping you make your decisions. So let me ask you, who's your guide? Because there's one who sticks closer than a brother. There's a guide in the scripture that the scripture in the original language was parakletos. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your guide. The Holy Spirit wants to be your guide, wants to be your comforter. And when you surrender your life to Jesus, His Holy Spirit is deposited inside of your heart. And now as you open His Word and you spend time in prayer, He will guide you. Can I say this to you? Listen to me. The only way you can play the hero in your story is if you have the right guide. So many of us are bouncing around. Playing victim and villain, victim and villain. Those are kind of strong words. Well, I have played the villain lately, y'all. Anybody lost your temper on 27 lately? Come on. 27's ridiculous these days. The drive from one side of Leesburg to the other is like 17 hours. It's like you're driving across Texas. We just need tumbleweeds. You getting mad at work lately? Shot off at the mouth, got mad at a neighbor lately, shot off at the mouth. What is that? Listen, that's us playing villain because we've felt like a victim. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That's about us coming to God and saying, God, I need you to heal my heart. Holy Spirit, I need you to guide me. I need you to be my guide. I need you to restore my mind to who you've created to me and who I am in the process. 
I say it to you this way. When, when we say there's no way out, we become the victim. When we say that person is an idiot, we become the villain. When we accept this challenge, we become the hero. And when I surrender my life to God, we are guided towards heroism. That's the call. You're, you're a hero. When I was thinking about doing this, I actually thought about buying capes for everybody to put on to, to, to ride, drive home with. That'd be awesome. I went to an Orlando soccer game not last year, and they gave out Orlando cape. They gave out capes. It was so cool. I wore my cape the whole game, y'all. Every once in a while, I'll just stand like this, just for the fun of it, you know. <laughs> you are a hero. You were designed from the beginning to be a hero, and some of you go, oh, well. And I'm feeling so much like a hero, feeling a little more like a zero, right? And I need you to hear this morning the power of the one. The one who surrenders your heart to Jesus. The one who then pours himself or herself into listening to his Holy Spirit through his word and through time of prayer. And I promise you, the next thing you know, you see God doing works around you and through you that you can never think or imagine. You're a hero. All right, Pastor Mike, that, that, that sounds good. But how do I actually do that? Let me give you a couple practical thoughts as we close. Making my story make sense. Number one, we need vision of a better future of ourselves and others. We need vision of a better future of ourselves and others. Can I ask you, stop poo-pooing on your future with your words. Stop poo-pooing on other people's future with your words. Speak life. Because if the blood of Jesus means anything on that cross, your future is bright. It's just a choice of what character I play and am I partnered with the right God? Right? We've got to have a better vision. Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. One translation is says they cast off restraint because of the narrative void, because of the lack of understanding of how this story is supposed to be completed in each of our lives. A lot of people just cast off restraint, forget it, Psst, whatever. I tried the God thing. I tried the church thing. No, you didn't. You came and sat in a few services and because you didn't win the lottery, you walked away. But the easy bus is not coming and it's a matter of pushing in and playing the story. And, 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 and interacting with the God. Get up tomorrow morning and turn the radio off and say, Holy Spirit, who do you want me to touch today? Who do you want me to speak life into today? What is my assignment? Holy Spirit, help me not to play victim today. When that person cuts me off in traffic and I go from victim to villain in 2.3 seconds. Come on, y'all. Right? That's what that is. That's why I lose my temper and I go crazy. It's because I feel victimized. And I don't have control and I don't have power, so I'm going to fix this. Am I the only one or is, is this just therapy for Mike or does this make sense to y'all? I have a better vision of ourselves and others. Number two, we need to be connected with a community who are committed to the same vision. Welcome to Church of the Lakes. If you're new here, you found a safe place to grow. If you're looking for perfect people, you found the wrong church. If you're jacked up, well, welcome home. But here's what I can tell you. I am so blessed to be a part of a community that has a vision to love and serve and rebuild old ruins. Come on. And restore walls that have been torn down for generations. Is it easy? No. It's not easy. It's smelly and stinky. And there's naked jello, jello shot ladies in the, in the picture. Come on. Right? That's what it looks like. 
That's what Jesus looked like when he hung out with sinners in the process. Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Let me encourage you, today is life step one. We take you on a four-week journey that we'd like to help you understand what it means to be a part of the Church of the Lakes, who we are, what it stands for, the whole nine yards. Today, right after service, as soon as we finish here, go out the door, go left, there's a place called The Rock. I'd like to spend about 45 minutes with you today starting a process because we have a vision for people that they would know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Because when you know God and when you find freedom and when you discover purpose, that last one, I'll change the wording, you can be a hero. You can be a hero in your work. You can be a hero with your family. You can be a hero in this community. Come on, y'all. There are no perfect heroes. There's just us guided by the Holy Spirit. Last one, number three. We need to be willing to engage and redeem every conflict that challenges the vision. Redeem and engage every conflict that challenges the vision. What do I mean by that? What are you taking into your life right now that challenges the vision that God has for you? And will you cut it out? Is it the music? Is it the movie? What is it that I go to? What, what's, what, what's my crack? Come on, y'all. What is it that I go back to, right? In that process, we need to be willing to engage and redeem. Romans 8 and 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So I have three questions I want to end with. You ready? Heroes? What compelling thing am I trying to bring to the world? What compelling thing am I trying to bring to the world? Now, now those of us who are struggling with victimhood right now, we just went, I don't, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm just trying to survive. No, 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 no. Pick your head up. Pick your head up. We got poo going on too. We got stuff going on. Come on, y'all. We, we, we got plenty of stuff that's going on. No, no, no. Pick your head up. You are a hero in the making. You just need the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do. You just need a guide that reminds you you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You just need a people around you that encourage you. That's why it's so important. That's why we do meet and greet. Some people look at meet and greet and kind of think that's kind of like a filler thing. That ain't no filler, y'all. That's important for y'all to go around the room and go, oh my God, what's up? You look so good today. Maybe the only time they hear that all week long. Come on. They, we need a high five. We need to, people need hugs. People need hugs. Right? People need touch. They need handshakes. They need a hand on their shoulder. Right? To get around people. What compelling thing are you bring in the world to the next second? Who am I doing it with? Because that might go towards helping you understand who's guiding you to victimhood or who's guiding you to be a villain. And the last one, how will I respond to the inevitable conflict? Ready? Last bit of encouragement for the day, everybody. You're going to have problems this week. Yeah. Woohoo! Anybody excited? Are you ready for your neighbor to just lose their mind this week? Your coworker to stab you in the back? Yes! How will you respond to the inevitable conflict? Listen to me. When you have the Holy Spirit as your guide, He'll speak life to where you are able to come back with words that are wise, yes. tough, yeah. kind, gentle, and attractive all at the same time. And you can be the hero of your story. Here's what it requires. It requires a surrendered heart. So close your eyes. And I want you to be real honest for just a second. What's guiding you? Whose voice are you listening to the most? What music? What media? What people do I surround myself with? Then with your eyes closed, I want to say this to you. There's another voice going, hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm the Holy Spirit of God, and I would love to 
converse with you. I would love to spend the day with you. I would love to help you get away from victimhood, get away from losing your temper and being the villain. I would love to guide you to be the hero of your story. That your spouse would feel so amazingly loved. I'll guide you to that. That, that your kids, that you would parent with such excellence. I'll guide you to that. That, that you would go out into the marketplace <laughs> and where there's the naked yellow shot girls, come on. I'll give you the wisdom how to deal with that very awkward situation. Because that's the reality of our world. And we're here. And so if that's you today, I just want to challenge you right now. Would you recommit to the guide? Would you recommit? Jesus, I recommit my life today. I've gone away. I've, I've been listening to other voices. I've been listening to other guides. And I need your voice in my life so I can be the hero of my story. Some of you today have never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And maybe you would pray something very simple like this. Jesus, today I surrender my heart, my life to you. I'm tired of playing victim. I'm tired of being the victim. I'm tired of playing villain. I'm, I'm tired of losing my temper and raging. And I'm asking for you to deposit your Holy Spirit into my life today that I might have that guide to live out who you've created me to be. Father, I ask you to meet each individual where they are today. We thank you. Thank you for your unbelievable patience with us when we are just knuckleheads sometimes. And we do it our own way. And we go off and play all kinds of crazy roles of victimhood. And we're villains and lose our temper and make the matters worse. Holy Spirit, guide us today. That when we walk out of here, the power of one is the Holy Spirit of God living inside of me to go fulfill the story, the narrative that God has. I don't want to have a narrative void anymore. I want to have traction in my narrative. I don't want my wheels to be spinning in my life anymore, feeling like I'm not getting anywhere and I'm not doing anything. I want traction. I want my, I, I want my life to be in gear and moving in the direction you created it to move. So help me guide you to do that today. Ask it. We pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Just a moment, the worship team's going to finish up in worship. We'll have some prayer team down here. Some of you may need to come pray with somebody. Maybe you gave your heart to God for the first time and you'd like to pray with somebody. Maybe you're still struggling with victimhood. Maybe you're struggling with rage or anger or being the villain. And don't walk out of here today. Here's what I said. This prayer team said this to me the other day, or said this to me this morning. You asked a couple weeks ago how many people need prayer, and a whole bunch of people raised their hand. But nobody came for prayer. Don't be that person today. Don't leave here today knowing you need somebody to pray with you. And you walk out the door to go play the story, the same old story over and over again. Today, God wants to bring some change. Today, God wants to bring some breakthrough. Today, God wants to give deliverance to your soul that you can go out and do this week different than you did last week. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. So in just a moment, we'll release. Um, I encourage you to stay for a moment in worship just to kind of take in what God has said to you today, process that, maybe take out your notes and write anything else he says to you. But if you're going to go ahead and leave and you're welcome to do that, please do that quietly because there are a number of people that stay and worship. So would you stand to your feet? Those of you who are going to Life Steps, I'll see you in Life Steps in a few moments. Have a great week.